Welcome back. All right, so some more news of the day for all you fine people in between the first and second period of the game between the Vegas Golden Knights and the Florida Panthers. Again, ridiculously entertaining Stanley Cup final. All right, so today the Anaheim Ducks got their coach, and it's not a recycling job either. Greg Cronin has been hired as the head coach, 60 years of age. His last five years, he's coached the Colorado Eagles, and he has nearly 36 years of coaching experience. So... I, I, I really applaud this hire. I think this is a solid move. We'll see what happens. But anytime that it's not a recycle, that it's actually somebody new, I, I will support it. I think that's great. So uh, all the best of luck to him with the Ducks. The Ducks, of course, looking to get better next season. They have the number two draft pick. Odds are it's going to be Fantilli. We'll act surprised in a few weeks when that happens. But yeah, uh, the Anaheim Ducks, I think I think that's, that's a smart move. Uh, Ottawa has some moves yet to make. Uh, Debrinket. Debrinket is apparently waiting until the ownership situation is resolved before making a decision on whether or not he'll stick around long-term with the Ottawa Senators. So he's open to it, uh, depending on what happens with the ownership situation, which again, according to Bettman, could be weeks away from being resolved. Well, he'll be a restricted free agent pretty soon. So for Ottawa, they're keeping all their options open when it comes to Debrinket. They want to hold on to him. They'd like to keep him long-term but in the event that he has to be traded, they are ready and willing to do that. And I would think that his trade value would be pretty darn high right now. So we'll see what happens there. But at the very least, the team seems to be doing the right thing here, keeping all options open. If he doesn't want to be there, there's no point in holding on to him. And so we'll see what happens. And again, with the ownership in Ottawa, we're waiting. Again, according to Gary, everything's fine. It's working exactly as intended. Uh, so, speaking of exactly as intended, the Calgary Flames, who will get their new building, uh, the deal apparently includes a 35-year commitment to stay in the city of Calgary. So we will no never have to deal with, oh, is Calgary going to stick around? Never have to deal with that. The Calgary Flames staying put, and the brand new arena is going to go up. And as a Canuck fan, I love the rivalry between Vancouver and Calgary. So, yep, a good thing to hear. They'll be around for at least the next 35 years. Um, so Connor Bedard, there's been a lot of debate. I've seen a lot of comments from people saying, if Bedard's drafted by the Hawks, I hope he refuses. Well, Bedard was asked about this today as, you know, a lot of these top prospects are at the Stanley Cup final, getting an eye full of what awaits them when they reach the National Hockey League. And he says he's excited to get drafted by the Hawks. I know there are fans who really, you know, don't want to see him go to Chicago, but from all accounts, it sounds like he's excited to go to Chicago, wants to play next year. And, uh, yeah, so he's, you know, soaking up the atmosphere in Las Vegas. And, yeah, we'll see how it goes for him. Uh, for, for Bedard, he could really be a franchise-transforming player for the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, it is Euro signing season. I'm always interested in these European players that get signed. They're always, you know, in their mid-20s. Their their numbers are really good out of Europe. Physically, it looks like, you know, they're, they're good to go and they're able to play. The thing is, we never know which ones that come over are going to end up really being as successful in their transition to the National Hockey League, right? So I don't really get into who got signed by who because we don't know until we get to next season what's going to happen. I definitely add those players when I'm talking about, you know, in the previews, when I get into the team previews. But when it's the signing season, again, it's sort of like the entry-level contracts. I'll report on entry-level contracts for first-round draft picks. I'm... I don't really get into all the rest because, again, there are a lot. And with the European players, there are a lot that get signed as well. During this flat cap era, I think it's more important than usual that teams are able to find these diamonds in the rough guys in their mid-20s who can come over and play because that's going to be a cheap contract. It's going to be an entry-level contract. It might just be for the year. usually is. And uh, it, it could very well be the difference between having a really good, solid depth roster and not right you have to get those guys on cheap contracts that can play bottom bottom uh six minutes and bottom two minutes if you're looking at defensemen right so bottom six in the four group and that that final two on the blue line or even a number seven defenseman right so the scouting combine started yesterday in buffalo there are 106 prospects at the scouting combine that runs through june the 10th so a lot of a lot of testing going on there also, free plug, Elite Prospects has their draft book out now. Um, I know HockeyProspect.com has theirs coming out soon. Um, I do not have a paid subscription through Elite Prospects 
tried to. I, I tried to, but my card rejected. No idea why. It it's weird. It'll it'll sometimes allow for certain transactions and not allow others. So I I don't even know what it would tell my bank. I it just it just rejects. But at any rate, uh, Elite Prospects has their book out. HockeyProspect.com will have theirs out. Very very in depth. I I did have the the Elite Prospects one from the last couple of years. It's a really great resource if you're looking for information on prospects especially the guys who might be diamonds in the rough and as i said about european signings well it's the same with the draft if you can get those guys in fifth sixth seventh round that end up being diamonds in the rough you're you're ahead of the game you're you're really ahead of the game there uh also today it has been announced that victoria will host hockey day in canada so of course that's the day that all seven canadian teams play uh january 20th of 2024 will be the next hockey day in canada and uh, yeah, so that'll be not too long before the All-Star break. Uh, should be a fun weekend. It'll be in Victoria. Um, again, you know, Rogers hosting it and all of that fun stuff. Before anybody asks, I, I, I don't think we're going over. We're going over to Victoria in January and again, you know, I have a wife and kids and all that. It's not that easy. I don't think I'll be going over, but definitely we'll be reporting on hockey that day. Because keep in mind too, it's a Saturday. It's hockey all day. So that, that, that could be a nightmare for me to try to cover everything going on and then Again, when when they had the uh, the hometown hockey here in Abbotsford, I, I didn't really, I don't know, I didn't really get anything out of it. So when they canceled the hockey, uh, the the that you know going around town and oh look, it's it's hometown hockey. When they canceled that, I, I kind of understood. It felt like it had kind of run its course. But at any rate, Hockey Day in Canada has not. That's a tradition now. So. If you get a chance to see that in Victoria, I'm guessing it'll be a lot of fun. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.